Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I'm going to be reviewing a fountain pen for you. Now, several weeks ago, I reviewed this, the Caveco Classic Sport Fountain Pen. And when I gave this review, I mentioned many of the other finishes, many of the other materials that you could get this pen in. There's brass, there's aluminum, there's even a carbon fiber version. Well, today I'm going to be reviewing doo -doo -doo -doo, the brass version. This is the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen. And because I did just recently review the Classic Sport version, I'm not gonna get quite as in depth with this review, but I do wanna point out some of the differences. And this pen is quite a bit more expensive than the Classic, so we'll talk about whether or not that increased price tag is warranted. So let's take a closer look. So here we are, the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen. Let's point out some of the differences between this and the Classic Sport, obviously. The major difference being that this is made of brass, this is made of plastic. Now this brass is very cool finish because it is sort of a raw brass and as you use it, it's going to get a nice patina on it. It's really gonna get scratched up and dinged up, especially if you throw it in your pocket, have it with your keys, change, things like that. I suppose if you wanted to, you could use something like Brasso or any sort of metal polisher on this and really shine it up after a while, but you know, I like the patina. I think that's one of the cooler aspects of using a brass material or using brass for this pen. Um, basically everything else about the form factor though is going to be exactly the same. You can use these same clips on this pen. Uh, the cap is still the normal eight faceted cap. If we look at the top of the cap though, you will have a little bit of a difference there. You have this cool silver colored Caveco logo there. Similar to the classic, the bottom of the pen body just has a little bit of a kind of flattened cone shape there. Um, the body itself is just cylindrical. You unscrew and post and you have a fairly good sized pen. Obviously, I have fairly large hands. If this is unposted, pretty much can't use it unposted. It has to be posted. There are people with little tiny hands might be able to get away with using it unposted. Pretty much all the same things with this pen. Um, one big difference though, since this is made of plastic, you can convert this into an eyedropper pen. You can just put a little bit of silicone grease on these threads here and convert it to an eyedropper. This is made of metal, so you cannot do that, obviously. So you're confined to using the cartridges or the little squeeze converter that Caveco has. I use cartridges for the most part, or at least I have been so far. Um, right now, I think I have a diamine ancient copper in there. I believe so. One thing I want to mention is the threads in here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but the cap actually has a little bit of a plastic sheathing inside. And so when you put this on, you're not clanging around brass to brass. Obviously the threads here are brass, but you're actually screwing it into plastic threads. And it's a very tactilely pleasing sensation. I just enjoy screwing and unscrewing this cap. It only takes a couple turns and it just works very well. And there's such a heft to the body and to the cap. It just feels like a very precisely machined, satisfying sensation. Another thing I would like to point out is that this comes packaged much differently than the Classic. The Classic Sport comes in just a little box like this. The Brass Sport comes in a cool little tin, first in a cardstock sleeve, but a neat little tin like this, let's see if I get this the right way, where you can have one pen this way, one pen this way. Um, you actually have room for two pens if you want, like so. And you also have room for cartridges. Uh, just a cool little presentation tin. I think it's nice that if you're paying more for a premium sport, they up the presentation a little bit. And as per usual, it comes with one uh, blue Caveco ink cartridge. I also purchased with this, this little squeeze converter, which does not actually come with the pen, but you can purchase it extra. And I have tried using this and I'm really just not much of a fan. I guess if you just had to use that bottled ink that you love, now I can't get it out of the plastic, then this could be an option for you. But frankly, you get nothing in this. It is so hard to fill it all the way. And even if you do, the ink capacity is minuscule. I have no problem using these ink cartridges. The Caveco cartridges are, are, cartridges are fine, but I've also purchased 
Uh, several different diamine inks I have here, Oxblood and Ancient Copper. I really love diamine inks and the fact that they make these short international cartridges, you know, it's, it's hard to beat. And then you can always just refill the ink cartridges later. You empty it out, just get a little syringe, pipette or something and refill it with the ink of your choice. So eh, unless somebody comes up with a much better alternative to this little squeeze converter, there are other, there's kind of these, I have seen people make sort of hacks to short international cartridges and putting a, a piston fill on those. I don't know. To me, if there are inks that you enjoy in cartridge form with a portable on the go pen like this, I don't mind using cartridges, even though I do usually prefer using bottled ink. Another big difference you're going to notice between the Brass Sport and the Classic Sport is the weight. Now the Classic Sport is almost too light to me. It's fine, you know, it's a portable pen, but it's almost like you're not holding anything at all. Obviously, you know, I, I've got larger paws here. God, they look particularly veiny and creepy right now. But this just seems like I'm hardly holding anything. It works okay, but I usually prefer a little bit more heft. And that weighs in. The full weight of the Classic Sport is 10 grams. So very little, very, very little. The entire weight with cap and body, everything on the Brass Sport is 43 grams. So over four times the weight of the Classic. Now, if you want to look up other popular pens and sort of see maybe a pen that you have, you can look up the weight and determine, okay, how much more or less does this Brass Sport weigh? This weighs more than my Lamy 2000, for instance. To me, it is not too heavy. To me, I really enjoy the heft of this. I always kind of like a heavier pen anyway, but this does not seem too heavy. It does not seem fatiguing. And I don't use this to write for long periods anyway. It's more of just a jotter, uh, portable pen writing on the go. If you do think that 43 grams or what is that? 1.52 ounces, I believe is too heavy. They do have the aluminum version, the raw aluminum sport, which is 22 grams. So that's more of a nice intermediate weight between the very, very light classic and the rather hefty brass. I mean, brass is heavy. It just is. And this is made of pure brass. And then of course, the other big difference is the price. You can usually find the classics for around $25 online, give or take a dollar or two. The brass is going to be around 90 to a hundred dollars. So significantly more expensive. The aluminum version is usually around $80. So this is one of the more expensive versions of the sport line. I think only the carbon fiber versions are more expensive. So you're getting a steel nibbed cartridge or converter filled pen for hundred dollars, which is kind of on the spendy side for a cartridge converter steel nib pen. You can get a Lamy 2000 for around $120 online for a gold nibbed piston filled pens. So you have to kind of weigh that out. I really do like the ergonomics. I like the, the feel of this pen. I like just the whole design and form factor of these classics. I quite, I enjoy quite a bit. So to me, it was kind of right on the line between being too expensive to shell out that much money for just a steel nib cartridge converter pen, but I have enjoyed using this very much. And I really like the look of this brass. I just think it's really attractive and really, uh, pleasing from a tactile standpoint as well. But how does this baby write? Well, if you watched my classic sport review and I suggest you do so, cause I'm going to be going into more depth in that review than I do in this one. I mentioned that all the nib units are interchangeable for all these pens, the entire sport line. So it's about a 10 to $15 nib unit you can get online. They're all steel nibs. Some are gold colored, some are steel colored, but they're all just steel nibs, interchangeable. So you're getting the exact same nib basically as this one. And in my review of the, of the classic, I mentioned that mine had some baby's bottom. It had some hard starting issues. That was a fine. And it seems to be not uncommon for these Caveco pens. So you're going to be paying hundred dollars for a pen like this, and you may or may not get a great nib. I actually did. I bought this in extra fine and it wrote perfectly fine right off the bat. Didn't have to do any work to it at all. It was actually a very nice and smooth extra fine too. So that's a bonus. So let's see here. We'll take a little look. I'm using, if I can even remember what ink I've got in this right now. This is a Caveco uh, brass. Yeah, 
and it is in, uh, what are we, extra fine. The ink is diamine, uh, ancient copper, I believe. Uh, yes, it looks to be ancient copper. And we shall write. I like stuff and things. Stuff and things are cool. I think we can all agree with that. Now this isn't the wettest pen in the world. In fact, I think it's a little drier than my fine nibbed Caveco Classic Sport was, but not horrible by any means. It puts out enough ink, it keeps up anyway, and this is an extra fine, so obviously it's not going to put down as much of a, a thick line as would a medium broad, whatever. Um, as with the Classic, you're not really gonna get any line variation out of this. It is just a steel nib. There's a little bit maybe. Reverse writing is possible, though it is extremely, ugh, it's almost giving me chills, extremely, extremely scratchy. But it is doable. This also has no trouble writing under its own weight, but obviously the weight of this pen is not inconsiderable, so it should be able to do so. But so far I haven't, in, haven't had any problems with skipping. The feed has kept up quite well. None of the issues that I had with my classic sport when I first got it, which was mostly just hard starting and I had to polish out that baby's bottom. This has been perfectly fine. So there you have it, the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen. Pretty much everything that I enjoyed about the classic sport fountain pen, I enjoyed about the brass sport but you're also getting the addition of a very premium, very cool material. I really like the look of this brass. I like the way it ages. I like the way it patinas, but you are paying for that $100 or thereabouts online where you could get, often online you can find a Lamy 2000 for around $120 and that is a premium fountain pen with a gold nib, a piston filler. This is a steel nib and it only takes cartridges or converters. So you have to kind of decide, is that price tag justified? I really enjoy the portability. I enjoy the form factor. Like I said, everything I like about the classic, I like about this, and I really like the weight. Some people may find the weight a little bit too much, but there is always the aluminum version, the raw aluminum version, which is a nice middle ground, I think, between the heft of the brass and the almost not even their feel of the classic sport in plastic. So you have to weigh all those things together way and decide whether or not this is worth it to you. I've enjoyed using it quite a bit. And like I said, my particular nib in this particular pen worked very well out of the box. But if you saw my review of this, you'll know that this one did not. I had to do some polishing on it, some grinding. So it's kind of a crapshoot with these Caveco pens. I would think that since this is an, an extra fine, you are less likely to have an issue like baby's bottom on a very narrow nib but you never know. With a, a double broad or a broad, medium even, you may have more of a chance of getting a baby's bottomed nib. So all things being equal, taking all these things into account, I would say that the $100 price tag for the Brass Sport is a little bit just almost to the point of being too much to pay for this pen. But the materials, the form factor, the ergonomics, Everything about this pen I like a lot. I think it's really attractive. I've enjoyed using it very, very much, and I'm glad I got it. So thank you so much for watching this review of the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.